In our cells, we have two sex chromosomes and 22 pairs of non-sex chromosomes, or autosomes. But we didn't always. A few billion years ago, when we were just single-celled, we were also single-sexed, all identical and performing simple replication. Then slowly, we developed some dimorphic features such as bigger size and male and distinct gonads between males and females, and we stored that information on a special chromosome which would eventually become our sex chromosome. Hi guys, I am the lab mouse, not the lab rat. I said that in a previous video and I meant mouse. It's completely different. And today we're going to be talking about the very complicated story of the development of sex chromosomes. Now, we can't really turn back the clock a few billion years and watch it happen in real time. So investigating this is going to mean looking at models and experimental versions of evolution. Uh, I found one really interesting paper that I just want to go over and see what it tells us about the evolution of our sex chromosomes, because how we got here is sort of crazy. One way that scientists can model evolution in a lab is by using cell lines, or just cells in a petri dish, and letting them replicate and just do their thing over time and seeing how they change. It's basically a sped up version of evolution that we can see on the microscopic cellular level. Now, there's obvious limitations to using a cell line. Most importantly, it's not a human. So we're not going to see the whole systemic thing that's going on in us, and there's not going to be the same environmental factors. But we can look at the trends and what happens in the majority of cells and make some predictions using what we found out to figure out what might be going on with us. So without going too deep into the nitty gritty of all of the science, let's look at one time when scientists did just this and modeled evolution with a cell line in a lab. All right, to start, these scientists took samples from cancer tissue in 620 patients. They chose cancer cells because cancer cells are known to replicate extremely fast, making our time scale for watching evolution really easy. They then put them in a nice cozy environment in the lab with all of the nutrition they would need to grow and allowed them to replicate over a period of time. Now, reproduction in this matter is sort of like us, but on our scale, we produce every 20 to 30 years and each generation can live up to 100 years. So doing this in cancer cells just allows them to do the whole thing in a matter of years and not decades. Anyway, these cells, when left untreated and just allowed to replicate, did some pretty strange things, and they did it over and over again. In hundreds of these cell samples, the cells over time ditched the whole sex chromosome thing. They lost their Y chromosome, they lost the inactive form of the X chromosome, and in its place it was two X chromosomes that pretty much acted like normal autosomes or non-sex chromosomes. Essentially, they devolved into a single sex. To understand why this happens, we sort of have to speculate, but the researchers predicted that it's actually about the ratio of sex chromosomes to autosomes. See, in a normal human, we have a ratio of about 1 to 2. But in these, they modified all of their cells so that they had a ratio closer to 2 to 3. But why does this matter? It basically shows us that our ratio of 1 to 2 is not the most efficient way for us to be storing information in our chromosomes. So basically, if we didn't need our dimorphism or our two sexes, then our cells probably would have ditched the extra X and Y a long time ago and gone back to this two to three ratio, but they didn't. And that tells us about the importance of the development of dimorphic traits in mammals. Even though we have something that's not that efficient for a normal cell, it's so beneficial on the organism level to have two sexes that it has been maintained despite the fact that there is a very poor cellular mechanism behind it. So that's really cool, or at least I thought it was when I first read through this article. Honestly, the more I think about it, the more I doubt that we can even make this conclusion. Cancer cells, of course, do not have sexes. They don't need to reproduce the way that we do. They just divide. So why would they have the sex chromosome? Of course, they're gonna ditch those. It's sort of complicated and it's always a battle to take what you learn in a laboratory environment and translate that to the real world because a lot of the times you just can't emulate the real world correctly in a lab. 
So we should be cautious about the conclusions they make from this. But I do think their experimental design is really cool of modeling evolution in a little petri dish. Like, that's crazy. Anyway, my background is in neuroscience, not genetics. So if anybody with some more expertise or less expertise wants to share their opinion, I would appreciate reading any in the comments below. I want to know what you guys think we can take away from this experiment, if we can take away anything. And I hope to see you in the next video.